Welcome to the CNCF YouTube channel. My name is Ron Petty, and I am a consultant at RxM, a cloud native and AI training and consulting firm. Today, we're going to talk about KHGPT, an AI for cloud native. So what is KHGPT? According to its website, it is a tool for scanning your Kubernetes clusters, diagnosing and triaging issues in simple English. It has SRE experience codified into its analyzers and helps to pull out the most relevant information to enrich it with AI. So KHGPT is a member of a new category of tooling, AI for, for cloud native. In other words, the AI empowered tools are helping us create a better cloud native experience and system. So this tool integrates um, with AI and the intent is to optimize the system outcomes. So for example, to find some kind of misconfiguration, highlight the fact that it is misconfigured, and then ultimately give us some kind of natural language expansion to give us some context on what is going on. So KHGBT is one of the premier tools in this AI for cloud native experience. And so what we're gonna start with is simply just installing it and taking a look at the help menu and just seeing its kind of basic operations. From there, we'll look at how it can integrate with different AI technologies, specifically LLM derived technologies like a, you know, something that drives uh, a chat GPT or something locally like Olama running the Llama 3 model. So we'll take a look at how to do those things as well. And then at the end, we'll take a look at actually how to participate in this project. We'll clone the repository, show the basic uh, commands to, to build it, and then we'll actually try to run it. And so that way you can contribute to this project as well. So we're gonna start off here on a MacBook Pro. So in this particular setup, I have a Kubernetes system already running. Doesn't really matter what's out there, we'll go ahead and uh, create scenarios as we go to make sure we can see what uh, KHGPT does for us. Okay, so let's start with the beginning. How do we actually install KHGPT? So at least here on a Mac, the easiest way is to use brew. Okay. And as we can see here, it looks like it installed it in this location. We can take a look here. And there is a bin directory. And there is an executable. So instead of typing this whole path, be sure to update your path so it's nice and easy to use, something like this. So I've already done this, that's why I've commented it out, so it is in my path. And now let's just try to run it. Make sure it works. Great, so KHGPT is actually written in Go, so this is more or less a static executable, so one file. Here we can see it conveniently dumps out a help menu without us having to do dash H. And what do we see? So before we walk through all these steps, really quick, how does this operate? So KHGBT uh, logically works in kind of two steps. The first step is to analyze your system. And how it does this is by querying Kubernetes, pulling down the, the status of resources. So for example, is a pod running or not? And if it's not, why is it not running? So it has a set of conditions that it looks for and captures that. So this is the kind of information that comes back from kubectl uh, events or kubectl describe when you normally take a look at your cluster when you're trying to debug it. So then it takes that information and shows it back at us along with potentially uh, some guidance on what, on what it means. Now these things are hard-coded, these checks are hard-coded. And so this, that's kind of the end of phase one. Phase two is we want to explain what these things are, these issues are in more detail. So there's a sub command, which we do not see listed here. It's part of the analyze 
subcommand sub called explain. And explain will take what it found on the cluster and send it to an LLM. And it basically will expand upon what it thinks it sees it's going on and potentially give us solutions. So real quick, what else do we see here? So analyze, step one is let's just go find trouble. Step two is we have an optional step that we can send it to an LLM to get a natural language expanded set of actions and details. Setting up those LLMs is through this authenticate mechanism. So basically for the case of OpenAI, if we wanna use that as our LLM, we need a key. So you would say something like HGPT auth, and then you would say which provider, in this case OpenAI, hit enter, and then it'll ask you for the key. And we'll do that later. If it's something like a local LLM, there could be additional information such as what is the URL to reach that. Caching is a performance uh, enhancement for the results. So if we see the same error again and again, there's not much benefit to requerying, requerying, and requerying. So the results are cap captured in a cache. So in the production setup of CageGPT, we can actually run this as a Kubernetes operator. So imagine that we've installed CageGPT not locally like we did here on my Mac, but instead installed it as a service, or in their case, an operator, into the Kubernetes cluster, and it will continually keep checking. And if the problem goes away, then we won't see it again, right? And the cache will be cleaned, and, and that's good. But again, if we see that error again and again, we don't want to be calling that API again and again and again, uh, potentially costing us a lot of money. We got command line completion, we'll enable that as well. Filters are the things we're looking for. So the particular resources in Kubernetes, like a, like a service, a deployment, a pod, or even third-party CRDs, like a Kiverno policy report, we can actually, instead of checking all the things, we can check a subset of things. So this is good for very dynamic resources that you may have in a CI pipeline. Uh, we don't have to check everything all the time. We can check for particular uh, Kubernetes resources, and we'll see how to do that as well. Okay. Um, generate helps us with the authentication piece. We're, we're going to skip this. We have help. Uh, integration is the ability to integrate with additional tools. So this is still a work in progress, but there are some third-party tools that have been integrated with KHGPT. One of them is Trivi. So that's an analyzer for the cluster as well. So it will produce its summary results. And then how it interacts with KHGPT is take its summary results and either present it to you or go to that next step if you do an explain subcommand and actually ask an LLM. Kiverno is another one. So if you have Kiverno integrated, KHGPT doesn't automatically use it. We have to use this integration subcommand to let KHGPT know it's there. And then same thing, it will look at its results, its policy reports, and then show them to you if anything was found uh, negatively, or you can go one step further and ask an AI. Serving is, is largely for development and potentially some deployments. So in this case, I mentioned we install KHGPD as a command line tool. And so we can actually run it in a local server mode so we can actually connect to it over the network. So we're not gonna show that here, but uh, it's helpful for development, but it's also helpful in scenarios where you wanna run KHGPT kind of like a proxy, right? You run it uh, maybe outside of Kubernetes and you can query it to do that analyze call and say, hey, show me what's going on, and then you may put it in your CI pipeline, for example. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this. So KHGPT, analyze. Let's see what it does. All right, so it's warning us that AI was not used, and again, it's never used unless you actually say explain, right? That's just saying we're ready to go further. But even with the hard-coded SRE type uh, checks, nothing was found 
incorrect with this cluster. So if you look at the documentation of CACHGPT, its primary uh, example is the broken pod. So we'll go ahead and try that as well. So basically, we're going to uh, submit a pod that doesn't exist. Okay. Normally, uh, you know, first off, everything looks fine here, but normally we would, you know, if we were to debug this, we would look for something like get pods, broken pod, and we can see here there's something wrong. Okay. Now, this is an example in the source code of KHGPT. There, there are queries like give me the events, give me uh, the descriptive aspects of a resource uh, status and then parses it for things like image issues. And so in this case, uh, if we now ins use KHGPT again, we can see that per our image, something is wrong, right? So one thing we may be doing incorrectly here is that there is uh, a login requirement, right? So we can't uh, receive this image. So maybe the, maybe the name is right, but we can't get it. In this case, uh, it is actually broken. So check one more time. Okay. So again, it found this hard coded error, but this is not using, uh, AI at the moment. So let's go ahead and try to use AI. Okay. So this is an error. And so notice that, you know, step one in theory still happens, but we don't see it yet. Uh, it was going to go to step two and actually use the AI. Now, which AI is it using? We actually haven't configured as it's warning us. So again, how do we know what we can do? So the auth sub command is the one that deals with us in interacting with an AI uh, agent, at least the setup. Integration, the other sub command is not for the AI aspect. That's for third party tools that we can query to see if it wants us to use its output into our AI uh, askings. So here we can see there's a list command and these are the uh, supported providers. And main thing of note here is OpenAI due to its uh, prolific uh, kind of, you know, use of the industry's use of its API, that's pretty standard here. But notice none of them are active, including OpenAI. And that's why we can't uh, use use it yet. But there is a lot of options. And so the ones we're going to do here are OpenAI and Olamas, just to show us a remote option, OpenAI, and a local option, Olama. So let's go ahead and start with OpenAI, just because that's the one most people have heard of. So in this case, we need to activate it. So we're going to do, first, let's actually do the command line completion, just to prove we can do that. Completion, Z shell, because we're on a Mac. Hopefully this all works. So KHGPT off, and then here we can see command line completions working. We'll go ahead and do add. Now that's a little unfortunate. We can't see 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 all the help here, but we'll just slap a dash H on there. And so the things we need to kind of be aware of is depends on which kind of AI model uh, is it a hosted one, a local hosted one, a remote hosted one. What kind of options we need to do. The main ones are what's the URL, URL to access it and which model do we actually want to use, right? Do we want to use a whisper or an instruction or a general GPT turbo type model? So those are the kinds of things. Um, so we're not going to go through all these. So what we're going to do is pick OpenAI. And it is telling us there is a default model. We could have selected a model like a dash model, but in this case, we're going to just put our key. Now to get a key, you have to create an open AI uh, account and fund it. I do not believe they have a free tier anymore. Uh, could be wrong, you could check, but uh, I'm pasting in my key now and it says it's been added. And if we take a look at the list now, we can see it's active. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the explain once more. And in this case, it should go to OpenAI. And it did. So again, it may not uh, be formatted in such an obvious way, but the first step is still here, right? Notice the errors uh, a, a little different. So it's similar to that base SRE hard-coded knowledge. And then step two is, is 
kind of given us this natural language expansion of it. So in the, you don't see it through the tool, but there are prompts that are set for different purposes inside of KHGPT. And that is used to take our you know, broken label message with some basic prompting and sends it to OpenAI and this is what we get. Now again, uh, to prove this can go away, let's remove our uh, error. So again, we had an invalid image. And try it again. And we can see it's gone. Now again, if you install KHGPT as an operator where it's living as a service up in Kubernetes, it is on a like a cron cycle, right? So every minute, uh, maybe not minute, but it's, you know, every period of time, it's checking to see if this error goes away. So you don't need to tell it to do it. This is again, doing it from the command line. Okay, so that's the basics. So next, let's go ahead and try to use Olama. So I've already installed Olama on my computer. That's, uh, you can look that up. And again, you can see it has a command line interface as well in various models and tools um, that we can do. So I've already installed the Llama 3 uh, model and I have Olama running. And so what we need to do here is actually configure it to use it. And so similar command, we have to say off add and here, uh, just to show another variant, because we, we have multiple things, instead of just saying OpenAI, we're gonna say uh, the backend is actually a llama. We could have said backend uh, open, OpenAI. And then we have to specify which model, because there's not a default. In, in the case of KHGBD, it doesn't know about a llama directly, so it doesn't know what the default uh, to. And then how does it reach its API? So again, I'm running it locally, and locally, the llama the server running locally is on port 11434. Okay, again, if we do the list, we can now see we have two choices. So here, um, if I do explain, remember, uh, we, we fixed our error, uh, and so there's no errors, but we can see it's using OpenAI. If we want to use a llama, we change the backend, dash B subcommand, and we can say a llama. And again, because we have no issues, even a llama says we're all good. All right, let's break it again. And now let's call a llama. Now, admittedly, I have a nice MacBook, but even as nice as it is, it's not necessarily nice enough to run an LLM. I, I have a, a, a pre-M1 processor, but plenty of RAM and all that's good, but still even here, this, this can take a minute to run. And the reality is, is under the hood, Olama, for those who may not be familiar, it's loading the model. So we, so we if you remember, we're using the Llama 3, the model from Meta, but it takes a moment to actually load it and it stays in memory for a few minutes. Now, notice this took a little bit of time. Notice we're only doing about two tokens, <laughs> right? Or uh, very, very slow, right? Uh, but again, we see a very similar output. Now, again, this isn't the same, right? It's not the same. If we run OpenAI, we'll see that it's a little different. Okay, again, different. Now, um, there is a cache, or in the background. So again, if we run it again, uh, everything should be cached, should be pretty pretty fast here. In fact, let's do a llama um, and see if it's faster than it was before. Should be caching. No, well, maybe not. <laughs> okay, we'll let that finish, finish up. Okay. Okay, nonetheless, even though it didn't uh, seem to cache because uh, it must have thought something was different, uh, there is a no cache option. All right, let's not use a llama just because of the, the speed difference, but let's use OpenAI. All right, so in each one of these cases, because we're using no cache, it should always go back and ask versus using, using a cache. 
Okay. Um, so that's another another feature here. All right. Next, we're going to take a look at Kiverno. So in the case of my cluster, uh, we can see, sorry, let me do all namespaces. We can see I have Kiverno installed. So we're not going to install Kiverno in this demo, but you can go to its website. For those who don't know, Kiverno is a policy engine, a declarative policy engine. And so what you can do with something like Kiverno is, is install it in Kubernetes. And then you can submit uh, basically a configuration where you can enforce rules, right? Like uh, when you submit an image, or I should say a pod, that it, it should have a particular tag as an example, right? So that's what Caverno can do for us. So how do you uh, activate it? So in the case of KHGPT, it is one of one of the integrations that is available. So again, there's a subcommand called integrations, and kind of like auth. Again, for the LLMs, we have the ability to, to engage them. So let's do a, do a list. Here we can see none of them are turned on or you know integrated yet. And so different ones have different uh, levels of integration. For example, Trivi, which is a runtime scanner, security scanner, can actually uh, be installed from KHGPT. It's one of those, one of those options. Caverno, though, does not. So Caverno, you have to have it installed uh, yourself. And since I already do, I just need to activate it. So here, in this case, I'll say activate Caverno. And again, what is it going to do? So Caverno, uh, you have to install it and then configure it with a policy to enforce a set of rules. And then the outcome of those enforcements get captured as reports, right? So that's a Caverno thing. Right, so kubectl API resources, we can see this, the, this custom resource that Kiverno installed. And let's just take a, take a, uh, oops, grep, take a look for that. And we can see here, there's all these different kinds of custom objects that have been uh, created and are and available as Kubernetes resources. So in that case, uh, what does it look like? So let's try, try one. So we have a pod and we have Caverno installed. Let's see if it, it notices anything. Okay, here we don't really see anything with, with Caverno. And that's because we have no policy, there's no policies. So in this case, let's, let's uh, enforce one. So I happen to have a, a sample somewhere else uh, somewhere else there we go and then yeah here we go so in this case this Kiverno policy uh, is cluster wide and it's basically saying that pods have to have a label called team, and that's it. So we'll go ahead and uh, apply this. Okay, jumping back here. If we take a look uh, at the cluster policies, we can see we have this cluster policy. And so again, the outcome of this will be a report. And so we'll see a little bit more on that in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and run it again and see if our pod is noticed. Okay. Um, actually, I should mention we're using this filter to limit it to just the particular resource we were interested in. In this case, we want to do more than just pod, though. We want to look at the, the policy reports. So that's why we didn't see it here. So again, this is just showing our prior error because it's a pod related error. So uh, now's a good time, I guess I should show us what filters are. So filters are the resources that we are looking into and, and querying about. So again, similar interface, we can add and remove and list the ones we're interested in. So let's look at list. So in this case, the green ones are active, right? These are the ones that were checked by default specifically of note, the pod one. That's the one that said, hey, I can't find this image. But it checks other things as well. There's ones that are available that we can enable, 
right? We can add those back to the list if we choose to, but by default they're not, but they're ready if we need them. And then when we turned on Kiverno, Kiverno added, that's why it says integration. It added these objects. Notice they're reports, right? So even though we have a policy, right? We could also say get policy report. And we can see Kiverno is, is rating these. Right, based on your policy, did it pass, did it fail, is it a warning, right, those kinds of things. So this is the information that is coming back now that we've integrated. And again, a policy report is per namespace and a cluster policy is for all namespaces. So in our case, we want to um, do our filter and let's do the, the cluster policy because that's the one we installed. Let's see what it re reports back on. One more time, and we don't see it. All right, let's just try policy report, make sure we're not missing something. Okay. Um, sorry, one more check. Let's maybe I install the policy report, not a cluster policy. Okay, the report must be per namespace. All right, so what we see here is similar similar out, out outcome. So there's lots of other pods running on my cluster that, that are part of just other activity. And we can see here uh, that Kiverno mentions them saying that it doesn't have the required label. So that's why we see it again and again and again. Notice though, it also gives a potential solution. And so this is the power of these kinds of tools. Now this may not be the easiest thing, thing to read, uh, especially with all, all the repetition here. Those are areas for improvement. But the point being is, is that we've, we're able to take a remote popular AI technology like OpenAI and reference it and use it to, to get guidance, right? We were also, we're also able to use a llama, right? a local AI, and we can bounce back and forth. Now you don't see it here, but again, in our uh, kind of tool set here, we can download the code of KHGPT and change the prompt. Now, ultimately, we'll, we'll be able to modify prompts uh, through the command line or a configuration file, probably. Uh, today, that's not one of those things, but just be aware if you can do a little bit of coding, those are the kinds of things you can do. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at the code real quick, and then we'll wrap up our discussion on KGPT. All right, so I'm gonna make a temp directory. And then here, there's nothing in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and clone the one we're interested in. Now the KGPT uh, repository, uh, or I should say, GitHub page has uh, many repos. So this is the main one that we're interested in. And again, this is to show people who want to contribute to these projects that it's pretty easy if you, if you kind of know what, what to do. So that's what I really want to demystify here. So let's go ahead and change in here. We can see it is a indeed a Go-based um, software. Let's just go ahead and build it just, just because we can. Make build. Okay, so I know this because I've gone through this and so you may wonder how do I, I know these things. So I did go through the, you know, the, the repo. I've been on the Slack channel for um, support. Um, if we, you know, we just try to make these things simple. So if we, you know, can get you to just jump in and, and see things and make things, I think it might make it even easier for you. Okay, so it appears to have built. And so where it builds it is this directory, this bin directory. And that looks pretty good. Looks looks like we what we were, we were looking at just a moment ago. So one thing to note is there is a config file that's used. So we can kind of prove this, that it's the same as, so even though we're using the, we're using the original brew installed one here, this one is, uh, and actually maybe I should prove it's different. Uh, let's do sh uh, 
SHA-SUM. Okay, so this is the, the, the hash of the brew installed one. And then this is the hash of this guy. So you can see they're different and that's because uh, we're, we're on the uh, you know main branch and you know there was probably commits here in recent days right here. Here's one from uh, two days ago, right? And that build was probably a couple weeks ago, you know, from, from the brew install. Okay, so there, there's that. So what about the configuration? So this guy, um, let's take a look at the off because we know we did Olama, right? And it looks like it still finds it. So why is that? Well, that's because of this. This is the default location of the config file. Okay, now this may look funny to some people who may not know, you know, why this. This has got to do with a standard from, uh, I believe, the kind of free open desktop in, in Linux. They came up with a, a kind of configuration or a standard for where config files live, where a, where a cache lives in your home directory. And in the case of uh, Mac, uh, this is one of those what they call XDG uh, settings. So don't let all that fancy stuff get in the way. This is just a file stored in a, we'll say a common location versus just right in the root of your home, home directory, okay? Takes a little use to, to find it. It is documented, but if you're not looking out for this, it can be a little confusing. All right, so let's take a look at this config file. And what we can see here is, is it stores some information about what's, what's going on. So it dumps out the active filters. These are actually included in, in the hard-coded uh, KHGPT as well. But it, you know, once you've installed it and run it, it actually creates this config file. And as you modify things like adding AI providers, right, like we did, notice there is OpenAI, including things like temperature controls. If you're familiar with, with LLMs, you know what these kinds of settings mean. We can change the model, right, those kinds of things. And then here's uh, to a llama. Now, you may have used Olama before, and you may remember there being a, a V1 uh, here to access it. That has since changed, so there is no V1 here any, anymore. Right? So again, similar, similar things. You can play around with temperature controls and, and the like. Okay? And if these are empty, like kubeconfig, this will default to your standard kubectl configuration file um, in the normal .cube uh, directory. Okay. So uh, just to prove that this version works, uh, let's go ahead and let's do another explain. But in this case, we're going to do bin khgpt. All right, great, it works. Again, if we want to go short, let's just do the pod one again. And there it is. All right, so what's next for khgpt and, and next for us? So. I hope this is enough to convince you that the tool, first off, is just interesting. There is, again, additional complexity to, to setting up everything perfectly, whether or not you want to run it as an operator, aka a service inside of Kubernetes, right? But I personally love how KGPT gives us this option to run it simply on the command line, right? Just a tool, like any other tool, uh, can point to the cluster and give us some useful information. I'm really excited for it. I, I believe it's gonna to continue to improve in areas like prompt management. Um, there's gonna be other tools integrated. It's, um, there's gonna probably be, you know, dare to dream, things like reasoning, right? So like if we have dozens and dozens of the same error, right? Uh, can we kind of minimize that so we don't get this kind of wall of information even though it may be correct? So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully uh, you'll check KGPT out and we'll see you next time.